Minister State, Deputy Kathleen Lynch, sharing with deputies Sean Kine, Dominic Kenny, and Eamon Maloney, Chair Nash. Could I ask the Minister to move the Government Amendment? Uh, I, I move, I, I move the, uh, the Government's Amendment. And could I just uh, remark on the last contribution? Uh, I just wonder how many people did know what was going on. It always strikes me as being incredible that as a child growing up, that if you did anything out of the way, you were usually threatened with being sent to one of these institutions, and yet people didn't know what was happening. Uh, I think there was more knowledge uh, than people are prepared to admit. I'm here today on behalf of my colleague, Minister Shatter, to address the motion before the House. Minister Shatter regrets his absence this evening, which is due to his presiding at Minister for as Minister for Defence over the EU Council of Defence Ministers meeting in Dublin Castle uh, with our uh, responsibilities in relation to the Presidency. I know that as someone committed over a number of years to getting at the truth of the issues surrounding the Madeline, Magdalene Laundries, he would very much have liked to contribute to this evening's debate, but he has assured me that he will be here tomorrow evening and he will contribute then. Shortly after the gov this government took office, due to their concern that the full story of the Magdalene Laundry should be known, Minister Shatter and I undertook the necessary preparatory work to propose to Cabinet the terms of reference for a fact-finding committee on this issue, and indeed proposed Senator McAleese as its independent chairperson. It was the government's commitment to addressing this long-standing and serious issue that resulted in it taking these steps and fully supporting the establishment of the committee. Last week, the Minister announced government approval for the publication of the final report of the Interdepartmental Committee, which was independently chaired by former Senator Martin McAleese to establish the facts of state involvement with the Magdalen Laundries. The report is extensive and detailed and runs to over 1,200 pages, spanning the decades from the establishment of the state onwards. Early in its introduction to the report, Senator McAleese says, and I think these are telling words, many of the women who met with the committee, and particularly those who entered the Magdalene Laundries as young girls, experienced the Laundries as a lonely and frightening place. For too long, they have been and they, they had been and have been forgotten. That is one of the great tragedies of the Magdalene Laundries. We must acknowledge that the hurt that many women felt during their time there was exacerbated by the failure of others over many years to listen to their stories or to seek out the truth of what happened to them. The decision by this government to establish a committee to look at the issue of the state's involvement with the Magdalen Laundries was a clear recognition that that failure had to be addressed and the truth had to be found and indeed when it was, it had to be told. I suspect the last thing any of the women who were admitted to and worked in the laundries need is for their plight to become a matter for political point scoring in this House. That is why it is a matter, of, it is a matter for regret that Fianna Fáil put this motion down. In the full knowledge that the House was due to debate this report shortly after the Government had an opportunity to devise a comprehensive response, having considered the report fully and spoken to the women directly concerned. People can judge for themselves the fact that people opposite are condemning the government for failing to do in hours what they themselves chose not to do during 14 years of government. The government received this report last Tuesday, but there was one honourable exception in Fianna Fáil, and that was Tom Kitt, and I feel I need to say that. The government received this report last Tuesday and was briefed by Dr McAleese on it. One option was to delay publication on the report and we, until we had time to consider it fully. But in fairness to those who were admitted to and worked in the Magdalene Laundries, we decided that it should be published immediately. We indicated that we needed a short time to formulate a detailed response to it and suggested that against that background, it be debated in this House within two weeks of its publication. It would have represented a great disservice both to the women affected and to Dr McAleese, if we had attempted to respond comprehensively in hours to a complex report running, as I've already said, to over 1,100 pages. However, that approach has since, as, as that approach has since been uh, portrayed, 
And the reason we took it was for one, the one reason, and that was to do the right thing by those who were admitted to and worked in the laundries. I listened with interest last week to the contributions from across the House regarding the Magdalene laundries. I have had an involvement with this issue of women who were admitted to and who worked in the laundries for more than 10 years. I visited with them in the UK on a regular basis, the most recent being in December 2012, and tried to offer what advice and support I could. I recall a particular meeting in 2003 at the Lazy Daisy Cafe in Notting Hill, where a number of concerns were expressed in terms of provision of service to Irish victims of abuse now living in the UK. I wrote to the then Minister for Education in November 2003, outlining the simple and I believed reasonable requests of those people, and a lot could have been done to improve their circumstances. And they were just straightforward matters, such as the extension of a free phone helpline to the UK, updates in the form of a newsletter, the provision of a fax and computer, the right to choose one's own counsellor and therapist, as it was proposed that a lot of clergy were to be involved in providing counselling, which I believe is somewhat incredible. Assistance with, the, with a phone, a speedier response to queries, and a comprehensive media information campaign, because these people were scattered. All of the responses were met with deafening silence by successive Fianna Fáil governments. As such, I find the hypocrisy of this motion quite galling. And I quote from a letter I received yesterday, yesterday from Councillor Sally Mulreavy on behalf of the Irish Women Survivors Support Network. This group represents the largest group of women that met with the McAleese Committee. In the letter, they commend the work of the committee and went on to say, and I quote, on a political level, I find it mildly surprising that the main opposition party leader can without shame and with significant amnesia express his disappointment at the failure of the state to apologise over the state's culpability. The opposition party were in government for 14 years and throughout kept people like me away, refusing to listen and blocked our path at every turn. Now in opposition and on behalf of his party, the opposition leader rushes to accuse others. I think Mr Michal Martin TD should reflect on the years and years of misery and rejection they inflicted on women by refusing all communications with us. The women, as a consequence, remained out in the wilderness for years trying to find a path to justice, and I am afraid his apology rings hollow. For 14 years, the Fianna Fáil-led government chose to completely neglect the tragedy of the Magdalene Laundries. Irish Women's Survivors Support Network and others were stonewalled and fobbed off for years when all they wanted was the recognition and an acknowledgement of the wrong done to them. This government acted quickly to set up an interdepartmental committee chaired by Senator McAleese, and we are currently reflecting on the content of the report of that committee. It's a bit rich for Fianna Fáil to be adopting a holier-than-thou stance, when they had every opportunity to act on the matter, but deliberately chose to do nothing. And perhaps Michal Martin, or indeed any other Fianna Fáil deputy, might answer this simple question. Why did you choose to do nothing? I was also interested to note uh, the contributions in the last week from Sinn Féin. It seems the party has come very late to this issue, as I see no mention of the Magdalene Laundries on their website prior to May 2011. Their action seems to have been an effort to score political points, and I would appeal to them not to make a political football of this issue and allow appropriate time and space for the matter to be properly debated. I want to be absolutely clear about one thing. There is absolutely no hesitation on the part of the government in making a, consider a considered and appropriate response to this report. We will try do to do this in a way that recognises the full complexities of the issues arising and meet the needs in so far as we can of the women who work there. That is what justice demands. That is why we sought a short time to prepare a comprehensive response to the report. And that, it, and, where it's few, and, and that is further why, before finalising such a response, we want to listen to the women concerned. We would have been rightly criticised in this House for any response we made to this report if it were done in a short period of time. Given the length and complexity of the report, it is understandable that much of the instant comment in the wake of its publication were not based on a full reading of the report. 
I would like to thank and applaud the bravery of the women who came forward to tell their stories of their experiences in the Magdalene Laundry and the effect this has had on their life. There was nothing new in it for me. I had heard it before, and every time I hear it, I'm still horrified. Like Minister Shatter, I hope the publication of this report and recognition of their experiences will be of some comfort to them and possibly even help to bring some closure on what they endured. I would like to thank Dr McAleese for chairing this committee. As Minister Shatter said last week, Dr McAleese brought integrity and independence to the process and was instrumental in having the full cooperation of all the state agencies involved, the religious congregations, the representative and advocacy groups, and most importantly, of course, the women who were admitted to and worked in the Magdalene laundries. There is no doubt but that independence and integrity was crucial in bringing together for the first time all that we now know about the laundries and how they operated going back to the foundation of the state. As Minister Shatter said last week, the report tells a very complex story spanning the decades from the establishment of the state onward. We now know that approximately 10,000 women entered Magdalene Laundry since 1922, since 1922 through a whole range of different routes. These included state referrals, as well as placement of girls and women in the Magdalene Laundries by many others, including significant numbers of families. We now also know that just over 60% of these women spent one year or less in the laundries. I hope that publication of this report will be a comfort to those and all other women directly concerned. I appreciate that many women have felt shame or lived their lives under a cloud because of the stigma that attached to their time in the Magdalene laundries, irrespective of the circumstances which resulted in their admission and regardless of how much time they spent there. The stigma was undeserved and its removal is long overdue. The Committee's report clearly illustrates that the stigma derives from misconceptions related to how women came to be in those laundries. Let me be absolutely clear that the issues raised by or on behalf of these women who spent time in the Magdalene laundries will be addressed by this Government. Minister Shatter has in the past met with many of these women, as I have myself, and has the greatest respect for the dignity of co and courage that they have shown. He wants to help and has long believed that this issue must be addressed. He has campaigned for a long time for the full story of the Magdalene Laundries to be told, and he and I were instrumental in the establishment of this committee. To that end, the government, unlike previous governments, put this process in place. The work of Senator McLeese's interdepartmental committee obtained the cooperation of everyone involved, state agencies, religious congregations, representatives, advocacy groups, who have done Trojan work in this area, and the women who entered and worked in these institutions. Their voices have to be at the centre of all of this. Go on, Omid. In light of the McAleese report, the Government wishes to explore what should and can be done to address the issues raised. And for the first time in the history of the state, we now know what happened in these institutions, and we are addressing the issues. And make no mistake about it, we will see this through. The Taoiseach and Taunshem met with some of the women yesterday, and we are taking their views into account. These women deserve the chance to directly share their experiences and views before the government makes a decision on the most appropriate way to resolve many issues identified in and arising from the McAleese report. They are being listened to, and indeed, what cannot but, one cannot but be impressed by their dignity and courage, shown so evidently in the last few days. There will be a full debate in the House next week, and pending that debate, the report will, con will continue to be given full consideration by members of Cabinet, and for that reason, I commend the Government's motion to the House.